can we have in Jesus all our grace and sins to bear? What a privilege to carry hell with thank to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often orphan. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry hell. We thank to God in prayer. Well, welcome again to our Wednesday evening to the old abandoned church on Buttermilk Road with the old abandoned preacher preaching the old abandoned message. We're glad you come. Put your prayer request on here. And uh, my voice is very bad. Uh, it's not good. But it is good to sing with. At least that's what I've been told. I've always said God made the crow just like he made the mockingbird. Amen. I enjoy hearing a crow uh, call from time to time. But put your prayer request on here. We're having church for folks that don't get to go to church tonight. And uh, last Wednesday night that we preached on here, we had over 1,700 people before the week was over with to view it for how long. I don't know, but they, they have. And since we've been Coming up here to this old building, uh, we preached to about five, 6,000 people, and I praise God for that. That's a big audience, and we're just trying to be a blessing to God's people and trying to reach the lost and dying world with the good news that Jesus still saves. Amen. God bless y'all. We changed the camera a little bit to try to get this uh, brightness off the camera, and uh, we're not not doing too good a job yet with it because we've got a place where it's sneaking through somewhere or another. I see if that'll help anything. I don't think that's where it's coming from. That didn't help a thing. I thought that was where it was coming through that. Well, this may be one of our last services because simply because it's getting dark earlier so we'll really we'll have to start earlier on Wednesday night or stop it all together and then of course as it gets cold we have, of course have no heat no facilities whatsoever and we'll be able no doubt to have a few more before it gets cold weather we may have to to change till sunday afternoon to it warms up a little bit a little later on we'll just see you pray we just want the place to preach the gospel try to be a blessing and a help to the people of god in these last days and uh, let the light of the glorious gospel shine into the darkness through us to his glory and his praise and the salvation of our people. As I said, if you have a prayer request, uh, put that on here. Uh, the last two times we've done this, uh, Facebook has refused to show us. Uh, they refuse. They, they don't show up the comments. I, I see as we make it, many people comment. I can't see what the comment is at this distance, but uh, I see that we have many comments and uh, very few shares. And I've encouraged people now for six years to share it to their friends and family, and I fail miserably because there's usually just six or seven, eight or nine that will share our programs, and that's your business. As between you and God, uh, you can be a great blessing to someone by sharing it with your friends and family. I guess some folks are ashamed to be uh, identified with such a country fellow and such a plain preaching. I don't know. I don't know. That's your business. You can be used of God to reach some lost soul. If you'd share it, you can be a blessing to some saint of God in your family or in your circle of friends on Facebook. If you would share it and pray God use this, Reach my lost loved one. God uses this to strengthen a child of God. And he does, and he would, and he will. Uh, but men and women 
uh, for some reason refused to take part, even church folks refused to take part in the efforts to get the gospel out. I've never understood that, uh, but that's the way uh, that it is. Uh, my, let me encourage you, the Bible says it's one of the commandments of God in the Bible, and that is to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. And you can go into your world of friends and family, and uh, plus some, you can go into your world by simply mashing that little share button on your phone. <coughs> if you would. But as I said, that's between you and God. But the Bible says that you not give so much as a cup of cold water that you wouldn't be rewarded for it. Don't save you. It has nothing to do with salvation. But it has to do with the reward God's going to give the people that serve him. And uh, he gives out rewards for that. The Bible teaches of, of that. And uh, he said you'd be rewarded. Now, if God's going to reward you for just a cup of cold water, to a child of God, how much more so would he reward you to help further the gospel? You do help by uh, attending, by commenting, by praying for these prayer requests. You do help me, and God no doubt will bless you for that part you play in this little work. But you can also go further and share it, and so I'm telling who would be saved and what child of God that in your family or friendship that would be blessed and helped and strengthened. That's between you and God. We ask not for your money. We ask not for means. We never ask for uh, finances, but we do ask for prayer. And we do ask for your labor. And it's a great labor to mash that share button and share it. But that's between you and God. My, 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 my. But uh, who remembers I'm thinking here? Miss June Griffith is in the hospital, had her gallbladder taken out. Uh, yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? Yesterday. I heard she's doing well. Last I heard, uh, but she is about 83 years old, and uh, things can change mighty fast with her. And, we appreciate you helping us pray for her speedily recovery. Also, a good friend of ours, Jason Roberts, uh, was accidentally shot, or accidentally shot himself. I appreciate you praying for Jason Roberts. Me and his daddy went to school together. Uh, what little I went to school, uh, of course, we uh, didn't see a lot of one another, but uh, our families went to church together at different times in life. I appreciate y'all praying uh, for Jason to have a speedy recovery and his family, and his family as well as our family. There's plenty of folks that need to get right with God. There's plenty of our kin folks need to get saved. My, my. But we're glad you came tonight. You put again, I say, put your prayer request on here. Pray for the pastors. We're trying to get a little bit early tonight because it'll get dark quick. And I'm slow at this business. Everybody wants me to be hurry, uh, be in a hurry and, and get get on with it and get done, but that's just not my nature and uh, that's just the way it is and God knows that when he called me to preach and I don't want to run through uh, what God uh, would have us to do. We're dealing with eternity here tonight. Pray for the pastors that they would understand and remember they're dealing with eternal souls they're preaching the eternal gospel to men uh, with eternal souls and they die and say they go to an eternal hell prepared by God for the devil and his angels and rightly so. And I can say praise God. Uh, amen. Somebody. Folks, I got a call from one today out in California. They're so concerned because the warranty on my 
truck has run out and they're concerned that I don't have any insurance on my truck with 160,000 miles. I uh, have got 200 and some 20,000 miles. They call me continuously because they're concerned that I don't have any uh, insurance on my truck if it blows up or a transmission goes out. But if it does, God will provide them a means and uh, if I can't fix it, we'll just push it out in our yard and plant flowers around it. <laughs> oh my, but it's good to know people are concerned about your welfare. They call about my life in church and want to add some uh, extra insurance to my health care. They're concerned. Ain't good to have people that are concerned about you. Now, I, I'm telling you, they, it does get just a little bit aggravating after a while. I'll be honest with you, though they mean well, I'm sure, but it does begin to bear on you after a while, always a call. But I uh, do remember Judy's cousin, Bobby Moore, his wife is in the hospital in serious condition. Is that right, Judy? She's in serious condition. I do remember and pray for them. Bobby, Judy's first cousin, good fellow, good Christian, and precious friend. Do remember and pray, and uh, I'm sure there's other requests on here. And let people know you're praying for them. Let people know that you see their request and that they're not alone in their struggle or hardship. One of the worst things Satan does to the child of God is to impress us that we're alone, to make us feel forgotten, left out, overlooked, pushed aside, alone. He works at that, telling us, speaking to us, dealing with us, and makes us feel alone. But it sure helps when somebody says, I'm praying for you, brother. I'm praying with you, sister. I'm praying. I'm praying for you. And let people that come on here with burdens and problems and troubles, let them know uh, that you saw their request and will bear that in mind and pray. That don't mean you're going to pray all night. That don't mean you're going to pray for them an hour at a time. No, not at all. But you are thinking about them, and we'll pray for them as you can, and as God leads, and he does lead. We thank you for coming tonight, and as we said, we're having church for folks that are not able to get to church, that can't get to church, that are hindered tonight, or you just don't go to church. You got uh, discouraged with all the troubles the devil stirs up around the house of God. I mean, he is our enemy, and he works at causing sowing discord, spreading deception, and depression. And he works at the house of God, I might to defeat the cause of Christ, to keep the gospel from being preached, to keep the saints from being helped, strengthened, encouraged, revived, stirred, blessed by the Holy Spirit. He works at stopping the things of God and the people of God. That's to be expected, but people do get discouraged, they get defeated, and they begin to stay at the house. I understand that. Uh, but thank God, God has ways to help us, to refresh us. I'm here to help folks get near God, get help with God, that they might get back to the house of God where they hear the Word of God, by the man of God, in the power of God, to the glory of God. Amen. To reach them without God, amen, and revive them in spirit that know God through Christ Jesus, amen. So you pray for us here tonight, if you would, as I said, pray for every pastor, every congregation that you know. Uh, pray that God touched our special tonight. The only thing that's going to save America, a lot of talk about saving America, and America is about, just about ready uh, to be overrun. We've done suffered really an overthrow in this country and evil has taken over from the White House uh, down to the schoolhouse. It's been working for years. Preachers tried to warn us. Most of them were ignored, uh, considered to be ignorant and uh, propagandist and uh, using scare tactics, but we're finding out them old preachers was right when they warned us about Hollywood and how they were perverted 
how they were evil and how their influence would destroy your home, your life, your testimony, your children. We're finding that out now in these last days. Uh, but the only thing that's going to save America <coughs> will be for America to get saved. That's the only remedy for America, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ being preached, amen, by the man of God, amen, called of God, moved of God, stirred of God, and filled with God, uh, preaching the word of God. It's happened down through history. Uh, God sent a man, amen, to preach his word, and it revived the nation, and America needs it. We've got a revival of the religion in America, but we don't have a revival of the Word of God. Everybody's wrote them a book, and all of them's toting a book they call a Bible, and they've forsaken the God, the God of the Bible, though they talk about it, but they've forsaken the Word of God that their forefathers built this nation upon and carried and was brought into these houses of God to worship. I'm talking about the old King Jesus Bible. There you go again, the son would say. I'd like to listen to you, but you rail on that thing about which Bible is the Bible. I found me a book that I can read so easy, and it's so light, and it's so helpful. Yeah, but it's not stirring. It's not reviving. It does not call sin out. The Holy Ghost does not abide on it, with it. He does not use it. He does not make of you a great Christian. No, not at all. But uh, that's the only thing that will save America is America needs God. Father, we bow here with you. I uh, thank you for this open door, this pulpit you've given us. How to preach the word of God as you call me to do them. Now these many years, some 45 years, uh, uh, and I bless your name, you call me to preach and you stirred my soul and you put it in me to be busy and to be about your work. And, and though it seems that if nearly all the doors are shut uh, to me, uh, but uh, as you have shut some doors, this one has come open to preach to folks that are out of church, to preach to folks that don't have a church to go to, to preach to folks that have been hurt at the church by the troubles the devils have caused that. Uh, they're discouraged and defeated, and some are just lost altogether, unsaved. Oh, and you set a work in motion uh, to get the gospel to them. How oh, might that they be saved uh, before it's everlastingly too late? We pray for every preacher to be empowered tonight of the Holy Ghost. Every man that's called of God, we pray to be touched, moved, and stirred, and they would preach messages that. We'll strengthen the saints and awake the lost. We pray for every congregation to have the visitation of the Holy Ghost in their presence there tonight to heal up the wounds and bind up the broken hearts but to strengthen the weak, to encourage the discouraged, to give victory in the battles and God to shine the light of the glorious gospel into the darkness where sinners are hid from God through sin. Oh, I pray, shine the light bright, shine the light long, shine the light tonight, that sinners be saved, oh my, that they see the hope that's in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We pray tonight, Father, in Jesus' name, and to his glory, magnify your word, uh, uh, glorify your name, uh, exalt the Lamb of God uh, as the Savior for the world, and uh, our nation, oh God, uh, how we need revival among God's people. Uh, oh, Father, the only answer for America is not in politics. Uh, oh, no, oh, not at all. Oh, but it's in the power of God. Uh, oh, that America would repent. If my people, you said, which are called by name, uh, uh, would humble themselves uh, and seek my face uh, and turn from their wicked ways. Uh, then when we hear from heaven, oh, to hear from heaven again. Then when I hear from heaven, you said, and you forgive our sins, and you heal our land. Oh, God, tonight, oh, in Jesus' name, help us to see that. Amen. Cause us to be controlled.
confront him. Oh, yes, Lord, call us to come near. Oh, that our nation be saved. Oh, Father, we pray be with our children. Touch there with Bobby Moore's wife and heal her. Help there with Sister Griffiths and heal her up. Uh, many a child of God is on the bed of affliction uh, and great physical pain and strain. A uh, uh, touch there we pray. Uh, uh, many a child of God is in great warfare. Many battles and struggles. Uh, give that victory tonight. Uh, as we would say, oh, victory in Jesus, uh, my Savior forever. Amen. He sought me and he brought me with his great demon blood. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless his name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. This in Jesus' name. Touch and reach and shine and work through us to reach our lost loved ones. Use this video tonight. Might awake sinners to the need of a Savior and to strengthen the saint of God even as of right now for your glory and drive back the devils that would hinder the signal that would stop the calls uh, that would distract the listeners. Oh, my, that they hear me help, that Christ be seen as glorious and wondrous as he is, and that the need of a Savior be found tonight in Jesus' name, in that name above every name, in that marvelous name, uh, that wondrous name, that glorious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask these things. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Amen, glory to God. Well, hallelujah. Oh, my, praise God for his presence. We don't have a congregation here other than my wife, and you are our congregation. Oh, but you can still sense the presence of God. No doubt there were great labors to build this building. No doubt there was much sweat and coal to put up this building. It would have been a fine building 150 years ago when it was built. It would have been nice after our forefathers. And no doubt they walked across these ridges and come up these roads barefooted as some hungry and cold and, and living in the cabins on the creeks. Uh, oh, just my, my, struggling to live in this wilderness of that day and uh, my long labor, hard work with bare necessities, uh, but they made time uh, to worship God, uh, to hear from the Lord Jesus Christ, to worship Him, carry their children to the house of God, uh, that they might Hear the word of God, uh, that they might hear the songs of Zion, the praises thing, uh, that they might be in the presence uh, of the Holy Ghost, uh, and the shouting and the worshiping, and the praying and the repenting, and the seeking of God on these altars. Uh, oh my, what a difference it made in America. Oh my, but in this day and time, most of that has been uh, forsaken, uh, and men serve God. Uh, uh, just in luxury and at uh, their spare time and no sacrifice, no putting aside, no dedication, no consecration. Uh, so many, by their example, have told their children that being saved is not important. Uh, by their example, they have told their children and taught their children that the house of God is not important, uh, that worship of God is not important. Uh, that hearing the word of God is not important. Uh, oh, they have taught their children by their example. The ball game is more important than church. Uh, they taught their children that vacations uh, and uh, worldly events are more important than being at the house of God. Uh, by example, they've taught their children that being saved is not that important. Uh, that going to heaven is not that important. Uh, by example, they've said to their children that uh, hell is not important. Uh, knowing Christ is not important. Uh, being born again uh, is not important. Uh, and now we're soaked to the wind. Uh, and in America, we're reaping a whirlwind. Uh, 
Oh, my, this world is so lost, uh, so blinded by sin, uh, so in the depths of evil. Uh, my, my, how we need to have God. Uh, oh, and we're so lacking as the people of God seemingly. We're so lacking in the power of God. Our preaching seems to fall on deaf ears. Our singing seems not to do anything as far as blessing the people of God unless you use music to stir the flesh and you've got a rock and roll beat or a country music song of music. That's just religious entertainment. Oh, my God, my God. Help us, Lord, in these last days uh, uh, to be a good soldier. Uh, hey, man, to fight on in these last hours for the glory of God. Uh, uh, that one more soul be saved. Uh, one more soul uh, be delivered from hell. Uh, one more soul see uh, the Lord Jesus on the cross dying for their sins uh, and to come to Him repenting. Uh, oh, my child of God, uh, it's more important than ever. Uh, uh, for you to stay with God. Uh, it's more important than ever for us to stay with God, uh, to keep addressing right and looking right and talking right and being right. Uh, amen. And worshiping right uh, and exalting God right uh, and witnessing right. Uh, amen. Uh, hallelujah. God help us in these last days. Uh, well, I want to say something to you again. Out of John 3, 16. My, my, nearly every message I got centers around John 3, 16. And I'm not ashamed of that. <clears throat> Most preachers' messages, no doubt, should center around John 3, 16. The gospel. Go into all the world and preach what? Preach the gospel, the Bible says Preach the gospel. For without the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. And I'm afraid that's why we as God's people are lacking in the power of God. And that is simply because we're lacking in furthering the gospel and preaching the gospel. Amen. And declaring the gospel and seeing that the gospel is sent out to a lost and dying world. Amen, amen. Uh, I bet here we see in John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world. We preached one time here about the greatest, the greatest being, God. Uh, oh my, uh, with the greatest love man has ever known. Gave the greatest gift that could be given. Uh, amen. And on and on we went that day. Uh, but here's a message I want to start tonight. Lord, be my helper while we have a line and can see. Uh, my, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You're not left out, friend. Uh, hey, you may be in the gutter this evening. Uh, hey, you may be a drug addict. Uh, you may be strung out on alcohol and pills, a pothead. Uh, my, my. Hey, you may have robbed and murdered uh, and stole and cheated and killed. Uh, you may be just an instrument in the hand of Satan. Uh, and Satan has used you to break the hearts of your mother. Satan has used you to break the heart and mind of your father. Satan may have used you to spring shame and reproach to your wife and your children. Uh, Satan may have used you Hey, to drive away your brothers and your sisters uh, and to hurt every friend you've ever had. Uh, I mean, you're down deep in the dirt. Uh, you're down in that ditch of depression and defeat uh, and disgrace. Uh, uh, but friend, you've not gone so far. Hey, where did God can bring you out? Uh, Jesus died for you. Uh, for God so loved the world uh, uh, that he gave his only begotten son. Uh, uh, whosoever you're one of them whosoever's, amen. Whosoever, amen. I would believe in him. Amen, amen. Shall be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoso believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You're perishing in sin. You're perishing.
perishing in this world and you're going to perish in the next world. If you don't get saved, hell is your destiny. You're lost and undone and sin has brought you up, down, down, down to the depths and depression and it'll take you down to the depths of hell. But it's not God's will that any should perish as the Bible says. But that all men would come to repentance. God sees to it the message gets to you. And when God is sent to it, that the message gets to you. Amen. As you're hearing it tonight from a rude and crude, and as the world would consider a very ignorant man, but God the Holy Ghost, through these means, have come to where you are, and it confronted you about your destiny, and it caused you to come and repent. Call upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I believe God. And call on His name. Ask Him to save you. Cry out to God in Jesus' name. And He said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The only reason you're not saved, hey, the reason you're not saved is not that you're a drunkard. The reason you're not saved it's not that you're a pothead or dope addict. It's not that you're a sour and low down conniving crooked devil. No, the reason you're not saved is the fact that you refuse. Oh, yet you have refused to start to call on God. Double yourself sober and honestly. Realizing that Jesus died for you. Oh, believe that Christ died on the cross of Calvary in your stead there that day. Uh, some 2,000 years ago on that hill called Golgotha outside of Jerusalem and it's still there. Uh, uh, you've refused to call on God. Uh, you've hurt your heart. Uh, oh, you let Satan deceive you and destroy you and you refuse. The reason you're not saved tonight is the fact that you won't ask God to save you. You won't call on His name. Uh, you won't come to Him. No, He's come to you. Uh, he's come to where you are tonight, uh, but you won't answer the call. Uh, you won't return the call. Uh, you won't humble yourself uh, and call on his name. Uh, that's the reason you're lost. Uh, you go to hell as many of your friends and family has. Uh, they didn't go to hell because they were drunkards. Uh, uh, they didn't go to hell because they were thieves. Uh, uh, they didn't go to hell because they were even murderers. Uh, and cheats and liars and adulterers. They went to hell because they rejected the Son of God. They refused to admit before God a sinner they were. They refused to call on the name of God. For God promised that whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the reason they're in hell tonight is they never would call on His name. Oh, they joined churches uh, they went through religious rigmaroles. Uh, they got baptized. Uh, they made deacons and pastors. Uh, oh, but they never did call on God honestly. They went from the heart as a sinner, asking God uh, uh, to save their poor doomed and damned and dying soul. Uh, and never in hell. Uh, oh, but that don't have to be you. Uh, here God gives you another time. Uh, here God's giving you another place. Uh, here God's given you not a chance but an opportunity to be saved again and he's answered mama's prayers and he's spared your life through the car wrecks he's spared your life through the overdoses he's spared your life through your life through the wars and through all the dangers of life God has answered mom and dad's prayers and he's spared your life and he's answering their prayer again. He's answering brother and sister's prayers. Oh, the old pastor down the road. Oh, the church folk down the road that you see so much fault about. Because they so much fault in a human being. Oh, but they pray for you. They befriended you. They paid your life bill at times. They bought you medicine at times. They brought groceries for your children. And yet you still resent them. And Harm your heart against them. And the God that put his love in them to help you. 
Oh, my friend, but God has come to where you are one more time. God has dealt with you one more time tonight. God has made a way for you to hear, for you to know, for you to realize. Hey, God has made a place again uh, where the Holy Spirit uh, uh, confronts you about your destiny and calls to you to come. Uh, as he said, come unto me, uh, all you that labor uh, and are heavy laden, uh, I will give you rest, uh, uh, rest for your soul. Uh, oh, won't you answer the call of God? Uh, won't you turn to him tonight? Uh, won't you believe uh, on the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, so much that you call on his name. I believe in God. I believe in Christ. It don't cause you to, to ask to be saved is not the right belief. The belief that just gets you to join a church. The belief that just gets you to get baptized. But it don't cause you to call on God as a sinner. That kind of belief, Brad. Good to see you, buddy. Oh, it's old man. It wore out, Brad. Woo! Praise God for liberty and joy here tonight. Kind of belief in God that don't change your life. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Those things, the example he gave, the illustration was those things he once loved, he'll now hate. And those things he once hated, he'll now love. What's a lost man love? He loves his sin. He loves self and he loves sin. And one day he'll realize that it was Satan all the time. What does a lost man hate? Oh, he hates the things of God, David. <laughs> he don't like to be around the things of God, Karen. He don't hear the Bible read. <laughs> he don't want to hear amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. And the saints say, Amen. I praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. But the lost person, though he may have his name on a church book, Though, though, they, though they dipped him in the creek or the lake or the pool, he could care less about that and he's not interested in it. He'd rather be listening to some of his country music stars, they call them. Now, country music, though, sad to say, though, they, they named the name of Christ. A lot of them grew up around the things of God. They sung their first songs in church. They made professions as young people, but they sang every night in a bar. They sang songs that glorify liquor, whiskey, adultery, fornication, vulgarity, and yet they'll talk about knowing God. That's a deceived people right there. And our country, Brad, is, is just full of deceived folks. Deceived. Their eyes have never been opened to where they see. Their ears have never been opened to where they hear. And they don't like it. They ain't going to have it. They ain't going to be around it. And if the church they go to and the preacher they preach is, preaches the Bible very much with conviction, with compassion, with the calling, with Christ, they'll find them another church. You'll say that preacher's turned into a fanatic. That preacher's just too hard. And they go back to sitting around the bars, hanging around the Naked savages had all the worldly activities. And you couldn't pick them out from the crowd with 2020 vision because they looked like that heathen crowd. They holler, talk like that heathen crowd. They cussed like that heathen crowd. They drank beer and liquor like that heathen crowd. Their interest, their gods are the gods of the heathens. They worship entertainment. They can scream and holler at the Coliseum. They go to rock concerts and country music concerts and all that kind of thing, and they can scream and holler, but if they go to the house of God, they expect it 
to be as a funeral home. And sad to say, Brad, a lot of times it is because everybody there is dead, including the preacher so many times. So sad to say. But three of that ain't no excuse for you to die and go to hell. God has made you a knight. He's come to where you are. He's dealt with you again. Oh, you ain't heard no thunder. <clears throat> you ain't been struck by lightning. One fella said one time, said, I just about have to get struck by lightning to get saved. And I said, well, usually people don't live through being struck by lightning. Do you really want God to strike you with a lightning? That'll probably put you in hell instead of put you, putting you at the feet of Jesus. Do you really have to hear the thunder? In this day and time, you better pay attention to that small, still voice. It's not God's fault. Jesus said about that crowd in his day, he said, they have closed their eyes lest they should see. And they have stopped their ears lest they should hear. We live in that day. God ain't, God ain't stopped the preaching. God ain't stopped dealing with hearts. God ain't quit calling to a lost and dying world. God ain't quit blessing his people. I'm sad to say I'm afraid if this crowd, this, this religious world is God's people, Give them a benefit of doubt. They're not looking for the leadership and the blessing. They're looking for some kind of excitement, some kind of religious entertainment, some kind of show. And they've got some people that give them religious shows and they've made multi millionaires out of them. Yeah. Pitiful, pitiful, pitiful. But God, It's made tonight a special night to deal with you lost souls again. Oh, you don't hear the thunder? You don't see the lightning? The ground ain't moving under your feet? The building ain't shaking? But the Holy Ghost gently, sweetly, wondrously dealing with your heart about the fact you need to be saved. You need to be saved. You're going to hell. You're under the wrath of God. God loved you and sacrificed his son and Jesus gave his life to a cruel death on the cross and died that you be saved. If you go to hell, you go to hell ignoring that bit of that. You go to hell hardening your heart against God's love. If you die and you can, you can. If you want to go to hell, you can. If you want to die in sin, live and die in sin, you can. Many are. God cares enough about you. He's not going to force his way or knock your heart's door down. He simply calls to you from time to time. Because it's not his will that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. Or well, it would be a wondrous thing tonight if you print out L-O-S-T on this Facebook, these folks will pray for you. We can't do your praying, me or none of that. No, any other man from Rome to Washington, D.C. to Nashville to Kingston, there's no other man in the world can do your praying. But God gives us the privilege. And he'll honor your attempt to get help. And he'll call to you. He'll linger with you. I talked to Jim McClure today. He come out and said a spell with me. And we was talking about a fella he's dealing with. You pray that fella's supposed to go to church with him this Sunday. Him and his girlfriend, both of them's lost. You pray God intervene and work that out. But he said the fella is convinced that God has given him up. And it could be so. But I, I said, Gene, it's sort of like a fella sitting at the house very sick. Said, I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying. Well, let's go to the hospital. No, I'm dying. Let's go see the doctor. No, no, I'm dying. I'm dying. Well, if you go to the hospital, if you go see a doctor, you might not die. No, no, 
No, I'm just going to sit here. If I die, I die. I don't believe it'll help me. And you sit there at the house and die. I said, these folks that sit at the house, Margie, good to see you. We love you. He said, I believe God's given me up. We'll go to the house of God. One fellow told me, he called me Plum from California. His name was Jack. And he said, God don't deal with me no more, Tim. He said, God ain't dealt with me no more since the night you preached out there in prison. And he said, God sure dealt with me that night in prison. I said, well, have you been in church anymore, Jack? He said, no. No, I haven't. I said, well, you don't expect God to deal with you down at Walmart, do you? You don't expect God to deal with you at Kroger's, do you? You don't expect God to deal with you out there at the honky-tonks and the hellhole and the dives. You don't expect God to meet you there, do you? Well, he said, no. I said, hey, what you need to do is find a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching, God-worshiping, Christ-exalting church out there. And there are some around. They're, not, they're usually not the biggest, the fanciest, Not the most prominent. But you pray, God will guide you. And I said, if you want to find God, I mean, if I want the sheriff, I'd go to the sheriff's office. If I want the doctor, I'd go to the hospital. If I want groceries, I'd go to the grocery store. Friend, if you want God, get to the house of God. Won't know which one to go to. Start somewhere and start going. Hey, man, Ricky, start going looking for God. You'll find God will lead you. He'll guide you. Seek the Lord while he may be found, the Bible said. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. God will lead you and bring you to the right place. So you can hear. So you can know. Some of y'all tonight, God's dealt with you right where you are. Some of you may be down at the end of the road going to drink you a few beers before you go home. Some of you may be out in the woods going to smoke you a joint or two before you go home. Some of you may be hunting somebody to get you a pill from, to get high on, get wild on, so you can even sleep tonight. Sin's got you to the place you can't even sleep at night. So I'm telling where you're at, out on the lake, trying to get away from your troubles. You may be up in the mountains thinking about killing yourself because your troubles, your life has got, sin has brought your life to the place that ain't worth living no more. But God has come to where you are. And he calls to you. He gives you the opportunity. He confronts you with your destiny. Your sin has burdened you to death. You're so guilty and condemned that you don't want to live. And you're afraid to die. You need to call on God. You need to call on God. In Jesus' name. He said, except you believe I'm he, he said, you'll perish. Jesus said that. Believe him. Believe him. He said, except you repent, you'll perish. You've got to change your mind. This crowd that says, oh, I'm going to get saved, but I ain't, I ain't going to quit my sin. And they ain't, they ain't talking about, they ain't talking about just petty, pity anything. They're talking about, I ain't going to quit drinking. I ain't going to quit, I ain't going to quit partying. I ain't going to quit shacking up. I mean, I'm going to get saved. I'm going to call on God. And uh, religion will pat him on the back and say, well, you're saved now. Uh, but see, God says, oh, no. Oh, no. They didn't come repenting. You know, when me and Judy got married, we went to the preacher's house. And the idea was that I was putting every other girlfriend woman aside. That she was turning away from every boyfriend, every fella. We were coming together to be united in holy matrimony. And we were. That was 48 years ago, just a Sunday or two ago now. The attitude of coming to God. And the reason children can get saved, I believe, so much easier than adults. Children come simple-minded and honest to God. Adults begin to play these games. I won't be saved, but I'm not quitting card playing. I won't be saved, but I, I ain't putting my worldly attractions aside. I won't get saved, but I'm not going to quit drinking. I won't get saved, but I'm not straightening up. I mean, I'll start going to church some, but now I'm not going to be a religious fanatic. 
I mean, start making conditions with God. And God don't have a bit of it. The church will accept them. And they'll baptize them. And some religious folks will pat them on the back and say, you believe in God, you believe in Jesus, you ask God to save you, you're saved, join the church, be baptized, sit down and hush. Come as you can, send us your tithes. And we'll meet you in heaven, maybe. Pitiful, pitiful, pitiful. I told a young man one time, handsome young man, 18 years old in Rome County Jail. He'd done a terrible, terrible. <laughs> and he said, Tim, I want to get saved. But I don't see nothing wrong drinking a beer every now and then. And he said, I'm not going to quit drinking to get saved. I said, well, you're not going to get saved. He said, well, what's wrong with a beer every now and then? You now, some doctor, they've heard that. Some doctor said that's, that was good for your kidneys. You got a drunk for a doctor, so what's your problem with it? I'll get me a real doctor. And there's a broom standing there in the corner at the old Rome County Jail. And I just reached and got that broom, Harold. Good to see you. And I brought that broom out. I said, if you told God, son, God, I want to get saved. But I am not giving up this broom. I like this broom. I need this broom. I won't be saved, but now, God, I'm not giving up on this. I'm not turning loose of my broom said, you're going to die and go to hell. You don't tell God what you're going to do. You don't come to God making peace terms and conditions. Our forefathers would sing that old song, I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Jesus. Mm -hmm. I surrender all. Oh, the idea of the framework. Jesus said, except you forsake mother and father, you cannot be my disciple. The attitude. That's why I believe, Brenda, that children get saved. What's the right word? Easier, more than older people do. It's a fact that younger people make more professions than older people. It's almost impossible. As your age gets up, especially past 50, to ever hear a profession even out of any older people. The children, especially young children, don't play the games that adults play. They don't try to bargain with God and get God to make deals with them like, like we begin to as we get older, as far as the teenagers and all that. I don't. We begin to say the conditions and lay out the landscape, so to speak, that God's going to have to save us on, and God don't have to save nobody on no conditions that they make, not at all. No. Our forefathers would say that, just I, I am with one bleeding. But that my blood was shed for me, and as thou bidst me come to the lamb of God, I come, I come. Well, sinner, turn to God and be saved tonight. Thank you all that's come and prayed with us tonight and praying for us and laboring with us in this small work for the glory of God. Well, I hope I can see your comments when we cut off tonight, but if we never meet again here, through the blood of Jesus Christ, I'll meet you on the other side. I have that promise. I have that promise from God. I've got it in black and white. I've got it broke down. It's his word. Amen. I have his promise and assurance of it. But we'll try to be back. We'll try to be back one day this week. I hope y'all got to see the baptismal duty. It's difficult to to uh, 
video it out there on the side of that lake out in Cumberland Park, out there, Fall Creek Falls Park. The wind was blowing, and uh, I noticed every time I turned my face from her, you lost the sound, the wind was blowing, and a lot of folk got, uh, like me, a hard hearing, and they couldn't hear uh, for the wind. Uh, but it's just a blessing to be a part of what God was doing and seeing those three folks get baptized, amen, for the glory of God. We got to preach on why Jesus was baptized there that day. We got to preach on why Jesus was baptized and just had a good meeting. And uh, I pray you just helped, I think, about 800 or so people uh, viewed that for how long. I don't know. Uh, but God can take every word and strike the heart of sinners and take just the picture and encourage the child of God. Thank you for coming. Remember us in prayer. And pray for the lost around about you and speak up for the glory of God every once in a while. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And if you turn to God tonight, text us. Let us know. If you turn to God tonight, if you're saved tonight, text us. Let us know. Amen. 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 We'd like to hear from you. If you're still struggling, if you're still struggling about being saved, text us. Let us know. We'll pray for you. As a child of God, if you have the will of God, you've fallen by the wayside or in great battles, Texas. If you put it on here, these folks will join in prayer for you and we'll help you as best we can in the situation you're in. God honors that. God does. We love y'all. God bless you. Good night. And if we never meet again this side of heaven, I promise I'll meet you over there too. Amen. Good night. God bless you.